Hey everyone, this is Alex. Um, hope you're having a great month. I know I'm really excited about the holiday coming up. So uh, with that in mind, I thought I'd just show you how I made a Christmas lights brush using Affinity Designer. Uh, I make image brushes for just about everything from rope to pearls to jewelry chains, garland, and uh, I decided to make some Christmas lights for Toonkins. Um, now, you don't have to use image brushes or even brushes at all to create a string of Christmas lights for an illustration. However, I personally find that having custom brushes for repeated elements like these um, are a big time saver and just great for continuity between scenes. Um, so as you're observing now, I've gone ahead and started building a Christmas light bulb. Uh, I just took a, an ellipse tool, converted that shape into curves, and just manipulated the nodes to create a shape that I want the bulb to be. Uh, if that all sounds pretty foreign to you, I'm just taking a shape and molding it into what I want it to be. Um, I then take that shape and duplicate it, and then I subtract another uh, ellipse from that and and these are this is how I create my shadow. Uh, I nest the shadow into the bulb and then I give it a blur uh, and then with a little tweak on the opacity it just looks nice and smooth. Uh, I find doing that over using the shadow tools uh, just gives me better control especially if I have strange shapes where the shadow of the object isn't very simple or maybe my scene has multiple light sources and I have to work around that. Um, I use the same effect for highlights by using the pen tool and creating a curve and then of course using the blur and opacity tweaks to, to make it look like a highlight. Um, so even though these bulbs are pretty small in Toonkins, I still like to put in the effort to actually put a bulb inside. Uh, and I could either make that look like it's glowing or, or just keep it static, but I, I like to have that amount of detail. Um, I know you guys appreciate that. Uh, and, uh, you know, the, the bulbs that I made for the necklace item, for example, uh, they're much more detailed because they show up larger on the screen in the game. Uh, but the structure is basically the same. Uh, so I just jazz this up uh, with some glow by taking uh, yet another bulb shape and adding glow. Um, you could actually do the same trick as the shadow, uh, but for this application I just used the, the glow option. So that's the bulb, that, that's done, um, but uh, I want a string of multicolor lights. So I just duplicate the bulb and I go into my adjustments um, options and just play with the color. Um, from here I can change the color of the entire object or just the color that I want to change. So I just select that I want to change the red into something else and it's pretty simple, you just play around with colors until you you get what you like. Um, I chose to use four bulbs depending on a strand that you want to design. You can you can do as many as you want. Um, this part is basically just the illustration part. The next step is really what design what defines uh, the illustration as a brush. Um, so I'm just spacing these out evenly, playing with the orientation of the bulbs, uh, giving them a little bit more randomness. I didn't want them to, to look really rigid. Um, so, if you've watched up to this point because you want to know how this will become a seamless brush, uh, this is the trickier part of the whole thing. Uh, and it's not really all that tricky. Um, the wire, which I basically make out of a curve, just has to be made into a seamless pattern. Uh, that means that the start of the wire and the end of the wire have to fit the same start and end of another wire. Uh, so, basically just imagine that you're making a stamp and you want to have a repeated image so the start of the stamp and the end of the stamp would have to be the same 
so that when you stamp them in a, in a row, it looks like one continuous image. Um, so now that I have that out of the way, I highlighted my objects, saved them as a PNG without the background, and that's mainly because I don't want the background to be shown as anything. I just want the bulbs to be seen. Um, so um, I go into my brushes tab now and navigate to my image brushes. I right click and I select new texture image brush. I then find my file and plug it in. Um, so it, it looks all stretched out and, and weird looking, but that's okay. Uh, we can fix it. Uh, the main thing I'm looking at here is how well my brush blends from one image to another. Uh, I can see there's a small gap. Probably nothing major, but it still bothers me, so I'm going to fix this later on. Um, but I'm just making sure that the body is set to repeat um, because I want this brush to be repeated as I'm making curves. Um, I'm just tweaking the start and ends of the image by moving these red dotted lines. Um, sometimes I get lucky and I get a smooth transition, but like I said, I'm just going to fix the actual image to make this work better rather than, than play around with this too much. Um, so here's what it looks like. I basically saw that where the images overlap, um, there's a loop part of the curve, um, which I could have avoided. I could have just not designed the loop, but I like a challenge, so I designed it that way. Um, I just ended up taking that loop and actually just cutting it in half so that when the end and the start pieces overlap, it looks like one continuous piece. So uh, there's our brush. Um, now we just have to make a curve to play around with it and just see how it reacts when uh, when you're, you're just manipulating it and really see if there's any further tweaking of the image that we can do to, to make this better. Um, so you're probably thinking, wow, uh, that seems like a lot of work. Uh, it really isn't. And, and like I said in the beginning, it comes uh, very handy for things like this. And, uh, you know, I just prefer creating my own brushes rather than using brush packs or, or other people's brushes. Um, I found that it, it taught me a lot about the program itself and uh, how it really works. Uh, and it just helps you understand what, what you're doing. So um, now you can see this in action. And I just took an image from Toonkins here. And uh, we'll see how it works. Um, you'll see that when I first selected the brush, it uh, defaulted to uh, to a, a certain color. Um, Affinity just, just does that. So I just deselected that color. And um, you could actually use that to your advantage and, and, and make it work however you want. But I, I like mine to be multicolor. So... Um, overall, pretty pleased. Uh, the lights move well when I manipulate the curve and the nodes, and um, that's what I want. Um, I, you know, if if there was some some image issues or overlapping issues, uh, you just have to go back and 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 tweak your design a little bit and and just play with it. Um, I hope this was helpful. Um, I get messages about my drawing programs and how to draw things. So if you have any questions please message me through the Toonkins Discord or, or Twitter. Um, and, and, you know, hopefully, again, you found this to be helpful. Um, happy holidays, and thank you for watching.